Welcome to 360 Net Worth, Inc. with David Disraeli. You know, one of the things, that, David, that we should really talk about, it's a big buzzword right now. Everyone's concerned about their privacy, being online, their financial matters, their real estate, everything. And you can, we're going to show a few examples how, of how accessible that information is and what you can do to protect yourself. That's right. Over the last, I would say, a year to 18 months, I've noticed that uh, when I'm talking to people, the subject comes up more and more frequently than it did you know, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't tell you why that is, except that the internet has made uh, obtaining information so much easier. Um, and there's websites now that say, look up so-and-so. And my clients are particularly interested in suppressing their identity with respect to where they live and, and what they own. And some people would say, well, you know, what do I care? And my answer is, well, you, you, you may not. But if you have a, a nice big house, uh, an LLC, a rent house, and you get into a scuffle, uh, either a business dispute or a, literally a fender bender, someone will get a lot more interested in coming after you if they find out that you have a significant amount of property and um, – LLCs, net worth, et cetera, versus someone who's basically a ghost, mm -hmm. which is our goal. Right. That's I was. You kind of answered my question. I was going to say, who is the profile of the person that should be concerned with this? You, I think you just kind of defined it. Well, some people, uh, I've had low income law enforcement um, types that just don't want anybody knowing where they live. Mm -hmm. And so we go in and we modify the property records to reflect that um, someone else owns that property. Uh, actually, it's a trust, uh, but there's no way to identify uh, where this person uh, lives so that if someone is uh, thrown in jail, comes out, and tries to hunt them down, they can't find them. Right. Or at least they can't do it easily. Mm -hmm. Other people, uh, they don't want their, their clients knowing they have a million-dollar house. They don't want uh, their vendors knowing where they live. There may be a, a million reasons why they want you know privacy. Or someone has a lot of assets, and they don't want to become a target just because of that. Right. Okay, I understand. I so, can't say I blame them. <laughs> I, I wanted to um, show you how easy it is to get uh, this information. So we're going to go to the – we live in Austin, so we're going to go to the Travis County Appraisal District, which you can do on your cell phone, tablet, uh, computer, right there from your, your car in the parking lot mm -hmm. uh, if you did uh, just get you know rear-ended by somebody. What are we going to find when we get there? Well, we're going to take a, a particular uh, – uh, property address just for grins and 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 find out how much information is at our fingertips and how quickly so after we go to the main site we uh, type in an address or name and we come up with a list and from that list we can find out um, who owns the property which is on this page right here and the address that the property is located at and the address where the owner lives which is on the bottom it may be the same. It may not be. Right. Uh, if it says homestead exemption under exemptions, we know that is their house. Now we can find out um, on the last slide when they bought it and who they bought it from. Oh, really? All that information. And we can even dig deeper than that to get the lien information and so forth. But this doesn't require a subscription and it doesn't require any know-how. Realtors use it all the time. And it's, it's basically uh, available to anybody that can type you know, English. It's really? that easy Wow! to find out where you live, what your house is worth, who you bought it from, how many square feet you have on the first floor, how many square feet you have on the second floor, what your taxes are, what exemptions you're, you're claiming. It's amazing. Do you know why this is public record? Why this is out there like it, it is? It, it It's always been public record because your deed is a recorded instrument. Mm -hmm. It's recorded at the, at the courthouse. Now, before the internet, you'd have to go down to the courthouse and – Either look up an address or look up a lot block uh, subdivision or someone's name and find the deed or the lien against the the, the house in the records. It took and, some effort. Nobody would. Nobody wanted to do that. I mean, right. private investigators, you know, that work for attorneys would do that. Right. But now you don't have to be a private investigator because almost every county, not every county, but ninety eight percent of every county in the United States will have their recorded information accessible no subscription through uh, the internet. Now, some companies have consolidated that. 
And for 100 bucks a month, I can type in your name and find out where you own property anywhere in the United States. Is there a record of the per- people that search for it, the people that get it? Like, if someone found my information, would there be a way to know who did that? It's anonymous. It is. Wow. Yep. You, can't, uh, you can't know that, no. So because the, the counties don't keep a record of who searches their records. So that leads us to the, 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 the solution. Is there, how do you protect yourself from this if you're one of those people that you mentioned earlier? Well, that's a great question. We, we have a number of different uh, techniques that, that we employ depending upon how much property someone owns and what links they want to go to to, uh, to suppress that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's not that expensive. Uh, but the simplest and easiest is to form what, what we call a privacy trust, which is a type of living trust, but it's anonymous. Most people put their house in living trust to avoid probate and disputes over their estate. A lot of people don't realize that when they go through probate, there's a 60-day period where their creditors, the hospitals, the doctors, the credit card companies, uh, the love child that nobody knows about, can make a claim against their estate. With a living trust, it bypasses that. That there's no opportunity. Um, so the living trust bypasses the, the entire probate process, but most people form it in their own name. Mm-hmm. So it'll say the John and Mary Smith Trust. Well, you haven't really suppressed anything. Right. My clients choose something like um, the North Austin Real Estate Trust. So there's no way to know whose that is because the trustee, the beneficiary information is not public. Only I know that. Mm-hmm. Only the client knows that. And I can't reveal that without a court order. Right. I, you, I feel like going right to my phone right now and looking yeah. up. Just looking up myself. <laughs> well, one of the wealthiest people in Austin, I won't mention his name. Uh, uh, I will say that he formed a computer company, went to UT, if you can figure it out, yeah. uh, has his residence in the millions and millions and millions of dollars and all the other property he owns in his name. And you would think, well, that guy's got the attorneys and the, and the wherewithal to to do exactly what we're doing. And yet he's chosen... For whatever reason, not to. Huh. So you get solicitations, you get junk mail, all yeah. that stops with with a privacy trust. So that's what, as simple as it is. What is step one and what does a privacy trust entail? What's the process? Well, it's basically a revocable trust uh, that's set up a certain way so that you can own a primary residence and still keep your homestead exemption for the county. Um and there's no tax consequence to moving it. There's no, it's not like a sale or an exchange. It's simply a name change. Mm-hmm. And um, it's, a, it's a document that has to be uh, typed and uh, formatted a certain way, signed, and then you attach a, a deed transfer uh, to the, uh, the, the county records reflecting that the trust now owns the property. So people say, well, that, won't they see that I moved it uh, out? And I'm saying, well, right now, if, if, if you do this two weeks from now, someone types in your name, you don't show up. Can they find out that you moved it to an entity? Yes. Mm-hmm. Will they know that you're in control of that entity? No. Okay. It's just a wild guess. So, okay. yes, there is a trail, but it's left uh, – it leaves the person wondering uh, who that entity is. could be an LLC for that matter. Right. Uh, so we also use, while we're on that subject, that same trust – to form LLCs for things like, you know, rental property. Mm -hmm. So there's no way to know who formed the LLC because that information only says the trust. If you pull up the LLC information of one that we formed, it'll say the such and such trust. It'll have, it'll have our address, our corporate headquarters and not the the clients. Gotcha. There's no way to know who that LLC is controlled by. Same with a trust. So if someone wanted to start going down this path, this is something you can do. I can. Okay. And how can people reach you? Uh, our main office number is 512-464-1110. Okay. 512-464-1110. And we have a number of websites and podcasts and videos explaining all this. Uh, but the main website dealing with this is called theflextrust.com. Is that what it's called, the Flex Trust? Or is it, because we mentioned earlier the Privacy Trust. The Flex Trust and the Privacy Trust are very similar uh, one is designed just for a residence, and the other one is designed for a residence and other assets. But it's basically, it's just a more complex version of the same thing. Okay, gotcha. All right, did we leave anything out? We didn't. Thank you for having me on. Very efficient. Thank you very much, David. Good seeing you. Thank you.